Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Teresa, this is Lost My Thread, and a very warm welcome to my sewing space today. So today's video, I'm gonna be showing you all around where I sew, showing you my little tools and things that I use, how I store everything, and I hope you can bring you as much joy as it brings me. Alright, so I'm gonna to try to keep the shaky cam to minimum. I am gonna show you things in more detail, but I feel like I should just give you a realistic tour of what this room is like. So this door, which I usually have propped close when I'm sewing, shows you when you come into the room, we've got a um, exercise bike that's kind of folded up for when we're not using it. We've got a stack of things that need to go into the loft because this is real life, people. As you come round, we've got a nice little plant up there to cheer us up. That's some sort of general storage. We've got a lot of music equipment. So there's a lot of stuff from this space onward that's more to do with my husband's music making things. If you are into guitars, you might be enjoying this little bit. He's got not lots of yummy stuff for music players. This is our shared computer space. So it's a shared desk space that we use. My husband uses it for work or for making music. I use it for making videos, just using the computer in general. And then as we come round, we get into my sewing space. So what I will do is I'm going to prop the camera up and show you all the different elements of what I've got and how I store everything in my space. So this is what my sewing space looks like when it's not in use. I am quite lucky in that though I don't have a room just for my sewing, I have everything where I need it to be. So when I do wanna sew, it's not very hard to get there. And then this table actually flips up I'll show you to become my sewing table. I've got little legs. I will move my sewing machine forward and generally my serger over here so that I can slide between the two. And this is my space. I will not pretend to know this. My serger is Singer Model 14SH754, which is super catchy. So it is a classic four thread overlocker. I don't think there's a whole lot to tell you about it, honestly. It works really well for me on all kinds of fabrics. Never had any issues with it. And I'm one of those, I have changed my needle once because I accidentally got something tacky going through it. But I keep the same universal needle all the time. You can tell me I'm wrong and I'll keep doing what I'm doing. But this is my serger and this is my sewing machine. So it's the Janome 360 DC. I keep these machines plugged in so that way I can just switch them on when I'm ready to go. This is a pretty new machine for me. It's got lots of fun stitches that I have really yet to play around with. I've used quite a few of them, but I certainly haven't exhausted that. This is a computerized machine, as you can see. So I've got a computerized screen where I can go between different stitches. I can move the foot from one side to the other. Um, it does sort of the automatic four-step buttonhole. I do really like this machine. I have an old machine that I love that also works absolutely fine, but it's just nice to have that little bit of extra options with my new digitized machine, or I want to say computerized machine, rather. If you look to the side of my sewing machine, I've got a chest of drawers. I'm gonna show you all the goodies that I've got tucked away in there. But if we look down a little bit, I've got some extra storage that I wanna show you first. This toolbox is where I keep all of my sewing hardware. As you can see, there are compartments for all different elements. So I have things like uh, jeans buttons, snaps, hooks and eyes, I have um, sliders for when you're making coats and things like D-clips, uh, or D-rings rather, and clips for if I'm doing some bag making. What I like about this particular box is that you can take out these dividers that you can see here if you wanna have a larger compartment. So I'm able to store my prim pliers here. So I've got those handy with all of the tools that I use them with. The other thing I really love about this in particular is when you close this up, this actually seals really nicely against the edge of the compartment, so that way when you tip it upside down, move it around, nothing's gonna fall out of place. So on top of this chest of drawers are the things that I tend to want to grab most often, so I have them really nice and handy right near my sewing machine, so they're easy access. 
This bowl I tend to bring over and use for any little leftover bits of fabric, say if I'm trimming a seam. I also use it for my threads as I snip them as I go. So it's just good to have something to put those things in straight away rather than just leaving them on the table, dropping them on the floor and making a bit of a mess. This is my magnetic pin cushion. Many of you will be familiar with these. This one is a prim one. I think as long as it's a magnet, it's gonna have very much the same purpose. I also have my glass head pin stuck on there because they are my absolute favorites to use. I've got a little small pair of scissors. They're not anything too fancy. I think they actually came in a little multi-pack of sewing scissors, but they work really well for just trimming those little threads off as I'm going. And in this bowl, I have my little sewing clips. So these are often called Wonder Clips. These are not Wonder Clip brand, but sometimes I use pins, sometimes I use clips. It very much depends on what I'm sticking together, what's gonna to be the best tool for the job, but I like to have them both readily available. I thought it would be fun to tell you a little bit about these two bowls. These are both bowls that I painted. So I went through a bit of a, a bowl painting sort of frenzy, I would say, probably that it was the year before last, where I painted a whole ton of tiny bowls, gave a lot of weight as gifts. I'm really into triangles intersecting with triangles. That's just a thing and I don't know why it is and whatever, I embrace it. But I really like my little bowls. They come in handy for lots of things. And this is a sewing basket that my mom got me years ago. It was a really beautiful, basically a picnic basket, but I thought it was just super cute to store my sewing supplies in, and so did my mom. This has actually become my knitting basket, so I felt like I wanted to have a space to put all of my knitting goodies. I'm not gonna get into all of the bits and bobs because I know not all of you are knitters, but just if you are interested to have a little view inside, I've got some beautiful yarns in there. In the back, I've got my little wonderful collection of knitting needles so this is leaky leak i'm probably saying that wrong but it's a whole variety of really nice bamboo needles that can be interchanged onto different little loops i've got my sock blockers for when i make my socks hopefully soon if you want to see all the knitting stuff let me know i can get it out but i'm not going to dig it all out today because this is more of a sewing thing over here, I've got my threads all in rainbow order on my thread spool holder, which is both functional and pretty in my sewing space. And at the bottom here, I've got some washi tape. So I do use washi tape at various points in my sewing. And I also have some uh, bias tape that I've made previously that I like to store on thread spools. Now, not to be a tease, but before I actually dig into this chest of drawers, I just wanna show you what I've got propped up alongside it. So this is my rotary mat. I mean, many of you will very, be very familiar with this rotary mat or similar ones. Alongside, I do also have oop, a couple of little goodies to show you. So I've got my, um, this is a quilting ruler. So it's a nice clear ruler with lots of different measurements, including some angled measurements, if you're not familiar with these. Now you might notice that this is actually not straight at the top edge. I will show you the other portion of it. I had this when I moved to the UK from the US, same as this rotary mat. This was all back in 2003. And I don't know how this rotary mat did pretty well. It's slightly bent and that is just from the travel, the journey coming from the US. But my rotary or my um, quilting ruler actually snapped on the journey over, which I think is not unreasonable. I put it under a lot of strain, I think, in suitcases as much as I tried to protect it. But I do still use this because it's still a really nice long ruler, a really long straight edge. And I obviously love the lines of the quilting ruler. And I use the smaller one for little smaller measurements. This is something that I actually got recently. I did have a similar one that was just basically a really old and worn out. This is a little paper cutter. So you open this up, put the paper inside, close it, and there's a little blade that will slide up and down. This is great for trimming off the edges of your PDF pattern. So if you're someone like me who likes PDFs, to trim off one or two of the sides before you piece them together, it's so much quicker and easier to have a little um, actual cutter to do that. This is Fiskars brand, and I just went for Fiskars because I know that Fiskars is a good brand for knives and scissors, but I will say lots of them work well. I had a really cheapy one from the stationers for ages, and it worked really well. This is the top drawer of my chest of drawers where I have the things that I wanna access most often, so probably a lot of where the best goodies are gonna be. I have compartments which I have separated into categories that make the most sense to me. In this section, these are my hand sewing things. So I've got a, an assortment of hand sewing needles. I'm sure most of you will have seen this kind of variety pack. But I also have these really beautiful 
tulip. These are really lovely hand sewing needles. I also have some thread magic, which I am a big fan of. If you are aware of this stuff, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, it's just to help to keep your thread from getting tangled as you're sewing. I have a couple of just basic thimbles and a very standard needle threader. I don't tend to use this very often. It's just if I have particularly thick thread to actually put through. And over here, again, the things I tend to go for most often have this is a lot of people call this the purple tool I would just think of it as a point turner I have my pump jumper this is actually called the Gina Majig works in very much the same way different name for the same thing to get over bulky seams when you're sewing on the machine I have some flower head pins these are nice and long and strong depending on what I'm pinning these might be the right ones for the job I have my magnetic seam gauge. So this actually gets magnetized onto the throat plate of the machine so that I can make sure that my seams are nice and even. I have a variety of unpickers or seam rippers because you can never have too many of these babies. I have a few different sewing gauges that I wanna show you. This is the basic sewing gauge pretty much everybody has with this plastic slider that goes up and down, nothing too fancy. I also have this really lovely Arrow Mountain one. This is made from bamboo and it's got both metric and imperial, metric and imperial measurements on there. And this is a really basic one that I actually made way back um, when I was first sewing, finding that I often had to fold things up to a quarter, one inch or one and a quarter inches. So I just made this with a piece of cardboard. So just to show you that you don't need the fancy stuff to be able to do the basics. These are my very fine, I think they're called silk pins. So they're glass head, they're super thin, great for delicate fabrics. And these are a couple of tools that I will use for either turning loops or threading ribbon, elastic, or tape through a channel. This is the scissor or blade section. I've got a really sharp, nice little pair of scissors. I also have my duckbill scissors, which are great for doing things like grading seams. I have a pair of pinking shears, always good to have. A pair of very small basic scissors. These also came from a variety pack and my nice dressmaking shears. This is my, oops, almost dropped it, my buttonhole knife. This is very sharp, so I always keep it covered, but it's great for opening up buttonholes neatly. These are all of my marking tools. So I have a couple of clover chalk pens they, that I tend to use probably the most. And these are, they're called threaders, the crafter's companion. These are erasable pens, but they can also, they, they are erased by either friction, which is what this little eraser is for, or by heat. So I can draw these on fabric, draw with these on fabric, and then use the iron to remove the marks. I think you, these are often also called, there's a brand called friction pens, Frixion pens that can be used in the same way. And these are kind of odds and ends. I don't particularly have anywhere else to go, but I use them relatively often. This is my tracing wheel that I use for tracing lines. So I'm gonna be using like dressmaking carbon paper. This is my fray check. So I use this before I cut open my buttonholes to avoid fraying. Got a tape measure. I usually have a couple in here. The other one's in use somewhere else. This isn't used a lot, but it just fits in here. This is my storm sealer, which I use to seal up the seams of my waterproof Kelly Anorak. And this is another loop turner. So sometimes I use this if I'm not using the other tools I showed you to turn loops. At the very back, I have some additional tools I'll take out to show you. This is a really beautiful box. This is something called a bento box, which is Japanese. It's one of my favorite things that I have in my sewing space. This is a gift that I got from my brother and sister-in-law who live in Japan. And inside here, 
I keep my sewing machine feet. I got a variety of sewing machine feet. I turn this right way around. And my sewing machine labels, if I'm going to be putting a label into what I'm making. Underneath, I've got some more sewing machine feet and also my sort of spare um, rotary blades as well, variety of sizes. And then I have this Altoids tin. I am a big fan of small tins for storing things and I think it's a cute way to keep things nice and tidy. Inside here, I have a variety of sewing machine needles. I've got a couple of pin cushions, so my standard pin cushion and my wrist pin cushion. And a couple of what I would call my sharps boxes. So I work in healthcare, so that's probably why I have that way of thinking of it. But this is any spare needles and pins that have either gone dull, have bent, or are just no longer in use. I put them inside here before I can actually dispose of them safely. And then this tea container has my used rotary blades before I've gotten a chance to drop those off somewhere safely as well. I have my sewing machine oil if I'm going to be maintenancing my machine. And this little dude. So this is something that my mom gave me, which was a really cute, fun little gift. It's super chintzy and tacky, which I think is part of the joy of it. It's very small though. So if I can show you inside, there's a very tiny compartment and I don't know what to store in this thing. So I would even have it out if I had something useful in it, but I don't wanna just have it out as a bit of decoration that's just gonna gather dust. So if you have any great ideas what I can store in this teeny tiny, I'll show you kind of the size of my finger to give you an idea of what it's like. Any ideas of what to put in this teeny tiny little sewing storage space, let me know. All right, middle drawer now. So this is where I keep all of my interfacing, some is fusible, some is non-fusible of different weights. It's also where I have a few containers for some handy things to have. So this Kusmi tea container, Be Cool Tea by the way, it's one of my favorites. Um, inside here is where I keep all of my ribbons. So any ribbon that I need to know is gonna be in one place. It's also where I keep my elastics. So again, just a container with all various elastics that I might be needing. I do also put my Velcro in here because it's not something that I use hugely often and it just makes sense for similar similar dimensions. I do have one roll of some cuffing and as I've got my ribbon in here and my elastic in here, you might understand why I decided that's where the cuffing's gonna go and it didn't have anywhere else to go. Something that is kind of quirky but I really love is my tiny vacuum cleaner. So I use this for cleaning out my machines. I've used it a tiny bit, not a huge amount. I am intending to do a whole big overhaul service of my machine. So if you are interested in watching the before and after, let me know, but it may be a little bit grim, to be honest. If I do anything with it, I'll probably pop on Instagram stories rather than making a whole video. And then this is just a whole load of various tape. So I've got things like Stay Tape, Washi, or um, Wonder Tape, Bias Tape. I also have my Bias Tape Maker, which I do love. It's a little kit that I got on Amazon. When you go inside, you can see that I've got things to make various sizes of Bias Tape. But what I especially love is this bonus tool that I was not expecting, which is an awl. Awls are so handy. You can use them for pushing the fabric through here, which is the whole point of it. But I also use it for making holes inside my fabric if I'm adding snaps or jeans buttons. And it was such a great little addition that I got in this kit. I've also got my Simflex expanding sewing gauge for placing my buttons and buttonholes neatly. And you'll see my instruction, sewing machine instruction books at the bottom, which I don't access a huge amount, which is why they're a little bit more out of the way. At the back of this drawer, I also keep my thread spools, the cones for my serger when I'm not using them. And last but certainly not least, in the bottom drawer, I have some yummy fabrics. So this is where I put the ones that I'm intending to use sort of on the sooner side. I've got a separate area for projects that I'm currently working on, but these are ones that I'm hoping to get to sooner rather than later. Some of these you will recognize from my December sewing plans video, so I will pop that up if you do want to check that out. This beautiful Nani Eero fabric I actually mentioned in my Christmas sewing gifts video, so I'll pop a little link to that as well. But these are all things that I want to have ready to hand, possibly to inspire me if I'm wondering what I should be sewing next. Now getting above my sewing machines is my sewing wall where I've got these little cubes with all kinds of nice little goodies and I'm going to show you what's inside each of them. I'm super excited about these because I built all of this earlier this year or the end of last year rather. If you were interested in seeing how I turned this sewing space into a blank wall into 
this lovely space you see here, then do check out my Instagram stories. I've got it pinned in my highlights. I'm at lost my thread over on Instagram. This square is for all things ironing and pressing. So I have my iron, it's not particularly fancy, it's a steam iron. The one thing that is nice about it, it has an option of being cordless, so I can take it out from the actual base, which can be quite handy. At the back is just my cup for filling up my iron. Again, that's not anything too exciting. In here are a couple of my absolute favorite sewing tools. These are my pressing ham and sleeve roll that I made. So these were made using an old cotton twill fabric that I had from a pair of trousers that I had as a teenager. Tell me these were not the most incredible bell bottoms you could ever imagine, but they didn't fit anymore and I didn't want to waste the fabric. So I used them to make these, which are also filled entirely with scraps. So this is my sleeve roll and my pressing ham that I use all the time. I also have my press cloth, which is just a piece of silk organza that I use to protect the fabric when I'm pressing. And my clapper, Taylor's clapper, that I love to use to get really nice crisp seams, particularly on thick, bulky fabrics. On top of here is one of my little project baskets. Anyone who knows Amanda Bimble and Pimble on Instagram will probably know what this is about, but she has this idea of making little baskets of everything you need for a particular project so that way when you're sewing you can have it all together. This is actually three different fabrics for the shirts that I'm making and you might have seen the video I made recently about the three shirts that I'm comparing, but I've just kept everything tidy in that box there. In the middle section here, I've got all of my sewing books and my only knitting book that I own, which is beautiful. And I wanna show you what's inside these tins because these are actually purposeful. They're not just here for decoration. So in this tin here, which is my jasmine tea, I've got all of my zippers. So I've rolled them up nice and tight. I've got zippers of different sizes. Some are metal, some are plastic, some are invisible zippers, but it's just to have them all in one place is really handy. And then this tin over here, is where I have all of my buttons. So I've got large and small buttons of all shapes and sizes, all different colors. Some are bunched together in little envelopes if I wanna keep them together for a project, but they're mostly just a mess in here. But I really enjoy digging through a mess of buttons personally. These little buddies are my cactuses. I don't have any pets. This is the closest I've got to sewing buddies, but they're really cute and they brighten up the space. This square is where I keep everything for cutting out. So if I'm cutting out fabric, I know that I can just go and grab the bits that I need and I am set up and ready to go. I have got a little friendly turtle who hides pins if I need to have any markings for darts and things while I'm cutting out. I also have a couple of pattern weights, both of which I made myself. These I absolutely love. I made these from polymer clay. I can show you inside, try not to spill them everywhere. As you can see, we've got different flavors. I've got chocolate and vanilla donuts. I've got different icings and sprinkles. I mean, I know they're not real, but you know what I'm saying. And I designed this uh, based on the Dunkin' Donuts logo, including a little time to sew instead of time to eat, just because I thought that would be a bit of fun novelty while I'm sewing, and they do make me smile when I use them. These were the first pattern weights that I made. These are just made from washers that I got from the hardware store, so I painted them it's actually with the same paint that I had for the bowls that I made, just some leftover of it, and I made them a variety. There are different size, shapes, and weights, and they are super handy, really easy to just pick up and put exactly where I want them while I'm cutting out. I have a variety of rotary cutters depending on the project and the size that I need. These Berta style tracing carbon paper are my favorite ones. I feel like they show up the most on fabric and also I've never had any problems with them not washing off. I've used different brands and quite often the lines are just not visible on my fabric or I have had staining ones. So these are the ones that I personally would say work well for me, but obviously test always on your own fabric if in doubt. This is the smaller section of my OmniGrid, I guess, is the brand uh, quilting ruler. So this is the smaller section with this irregular line from where it snapped, but it's a really nice handy size, to be honest. I wouldn't have minded having a really tiny one in addition to a long one. So I kind of get the best of both with my broken quilting ruler. Behind these, 
I have my curved ruler if I'm going to be tra uh, grading between seams, really handy to have, and some tracing paper if I'm tracing out my patterns. Sometimes I trace, sometimes I cut. Really depends if I think I'm going to use the pattern again for a different size, or if I'm not sure what size to use, then I will go ahead and trace it out just to be on the safe side and avoid the waste of paying for all the printing pages. And then above that, I've got two more little project baskets. So I actually have four of these. I think I've got one in another room. I'm not quite sure what is in it. I think some ginger jeans that have been abandoned. Um, but inside here are some current sewing projects that I'm working on. On the bottom, I've got a pattern for this wardrobe by me over shirt. If you have seen my sewing plans video, you probably know that I'm working on an over shirt for my husband. I have the second muslin cut out. The first muslin was definitely not right. Fitting a man is hard, guys. Well, fitting anyone that's not yourself, I think probably is hard. And then on, on the basket that I've got underneath are some fun little rainbow squares. Ooh, I don't wanna make a mess of those. I've got a few more colors to cut up for a quilt that I'm planning to make for my niece. I can show you the inspiration for that. Um, well, this is actually my draft of what it's going to look like. I'll have to pop the inspiration photo up that I saw on Pinterest. But I'm planning to make her a little rainbow square, kind of like a pixelated rainbow quilt. Now you are up on the step ladder with me, so I will try to be not too wobbly. I couldn't get this to be tall enough on my tripod. This is how I store my PDF patterns. As you can see, I have little categories for what's going to be in each section so that I know what I've got. If I'm looking for something, I'll know how to find it easily. So I can just whip out a random thing. I honestly don't know what's going to be here. This is the La Brea Tee by Half Moon Atelier and dress version with patch pockets that I designed. I often will also add on there if I cut out a particular size or if this is the whole size not cut out, but who knows what size is in there, a little bit of a mystery. But I also at the bottom of here have a small container, if I can grab him, which is where I keep some safety pins. Safety pins are always handy to have around. I've got a whole variety of sizes and shapes. I tend to use my other tools more often than safety pins, but sometimes you just can't beat them. So thank you for coming on a little tour of my sewing space. I hope you enjoyed looking around and seeing how I store things and what I've got in my stash of tools and goodies. I am planning to do some sewing tools videos looking at individual sewing tools that I use and I love telling you how I use them and why I really love them. If there's any tools that you've seen or anything in my sewing area that you're curious about in particular, let me know, put a comment down below and I can actually just prioritize that one and try and get that one out sooner. But you'll be seeing lots of little videos, short videos of me just showing you how I use all the goodies that I've got in my sewing space. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed it today. If you did, give me a little like, and if you would subscribe, if you wanna see more of my videos, I really do appreciate it. I do wanna say a big thank you to all of my subscribers. I'm only a little teeny tiny YouTube channel, so every individual subscriber is just huge to me, and I really appreciate you watching my videos and being interested in my content. So thank you, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys again soon. Bye.